first uh, update on the uh, MiG-25 um, RBF. Now, cockpit wheel, wheel well are done. For the cockpit colour, I used um, P3, that's Privateer Press, um, Arcane Blue which I think in my mind comes to a pretty close representation of the uh, Russian turquoise. Um, so, if we look here in the reference book, we can see, okay, bearing in mind that's a little bit darker due, due to the shadow, it's not too far off. Um, so if you are working on Russian aircraft, I keep well, I have one pot of this. I really need to get another, but I still I've had. But as it's only really used for the cockpits of Russian aircraft from a specific period, um, it lasts has lasted me many years. So this is Privateer uh, Press who do a War Machine, and this is their Arcane Blue. is a very is I think is one of the closest paints I've got to the. Uh, infamous or famous Russian uh, cockpit turquoise um, seat belts were made uh, using uh, painted masking tape um, I find not to use the uh, Japanese uh, kabuki masking tape just a more general masking tape and I keep some uh, stuck to a tile piece and then just cut strips off as I need them um, the Japanese uh, kabuki tape, the one that we so happily use after, or famous Tamiya tape, is a little bit too smooth, so I find the paint flakes off, so you need a more conventional, uh, like general purpose masking tape, like uh, this stuff that you would buy in like a DIY shop. Um, it's better in my mind for uh, uh, seat belts. The instrument panel uh, I don't know how well you can see it here in this view um, I don't know how well that's going to focus in the instrument panel did, was meant to come with a decal and as I discovered, maybe I need to leave these decals a little bit longer to soak because when I tried to nudge it off the backing paper, I made a bit of a mess of it. So I ended up painting in my decals. But it's a, a worthwhile warning shot um, with the ICM decals to give them maybe a little bit longer than I would uh, other manufacturers' uh, decals. So, but I think the instrument panel painted up quite well. And once it's all under the coving, and um, you've got the canopy on it's going to be um, quite well hidden now what I did in this case was to pick out the details I put on the turquoise and then I just applied flory modeler black wash because that has the advantage it goes into the, the dials um, <clears throat> and then you can wipe it off and it I've, it's an easier way, particularly if you've got pronounced dials and rather than struggling to focus and see where the dial is if you're painting in your decals, something like using a, a wash and then just wiping it off makes it easier. Now, with the distance you've got on this thing between the um, main gear and the nose so much of the weight is well forward now there's no mention in this uh these instructions about putting nose weights in and i think that's fairly clear um i don't think they need it i might i've got some left so i may well pop them in into the tip of the nose just to be doubly sure but if what's back there is enough to tip the model forward there's some really weird distributions of plax plastic thickness so I don't think and this model needs those weights, and ICM make no mention of it. It's, it's probably perfectly well uh, on its own. So 
Uh, I'm just trying to think. Is this my first ICM kit? It may be. It may well be. Um, I'm liking it. Uh, I think I've built kits that they shared moulds with other people. I think the Condor kit might have... Um, the two-seater version of this, which was the Condor kit, I think ICM might have used, uh, in their earlier days, used that kit's moulds before they updated their own. Um, I might be... Correct me if I'm wrong here. I'm going to do the grey because we can have a lot more fun with the weathering and the final tone on it. So this is this build is for um, Rob Basic Modelings uh, and the group build groups uh, recce build, and uh, progressing quite nicely. So just some little build updates. Things are progressing. Normally I'd go a bit further before uh, posting another one but I think something I picked up on this particular kit that if you look here in the instructions you can see uh, this shoulder that I'm pointing to to get this lower fuselage panel, that just has to be cut away. It's meant to butt up against here. And dimensionally, these parts just don't match up. I don't know if it was from an earlier version or something like that. But you've got a fair bit. I know it's meant to lock into there. But uh, it's just... I don't know if I've missed something out or whatever, but the gap is perceived there certainly doesn't match up what you'd see here, but other parts do seem to line up. So if you are building one of these, this feature here is something that really does need to be reworked and then thin out this area in order to get this component so fundamentally this alignment or fitting plastic that's here has had to be taken off and then this part actually thinned down to enable it to get bring mind once these fit into here some kind of um quality of fit so um, with that lining up there. I mean, with a little bit of jiggling around, I can get a reasonable level of fit there. But you can see what the issue is. Um, here, and creating the continuity on this surface. So that is definitely something to be watching out for if you do end up building this kit that I think some people have the issues around the top area but I think without thinning that down taking that off you will not get a fit there and this part uh, just won't this bottom uh, fuselage panel just won't go on uh, effectively unless you address the issues here uh, also one thing I don't particularly like is having these the uh, doors uh, for the air intake in this molded open position just a, it would be nice if you could have them open or closed i think that position and incorporated into that is something i think they could have done separately but that's just a personal perspective apart from that i do like the way this is going together and the way this is engineered um it's just i think there are possibly some alignment and assembly issues on this that need to be understood and worked through and uh, all the fun of assembly anyway just something I've had to felt I ought to point out here to get things to fit properly right update on the MiG-25 RBF uh, pretty much ready for painting now I've done a reasonable bit of uh, filling and sanding um, I'm going to hit it with some white paint 
paint so I can actually see it against the uh, grey. Uh, putting on dark grey or mid grey is just going to be difficult to see anyway. Um, and I'd like rather like a, a lighter base for this one. So I'm going to hit it with some white now. Um, overall fit not too horrendous in all fairness. I've got to, uh, using the pin, take out where some of the uh, Deluxe Products putty has flowed into areas like that. Um, that's where I thin it down and then run it as a bead to fill in the, the wing root gaps. In all fairness, it's not been too bad. Lost detail here. Uh, I may look to restoring that, but that's in quite a hard to see spot once you've got the belly tank on. And uh, the undercarriage on this is going to be a very obscured location, so I might restore it to some level. But that step has been the worst part. Also, some fit issues. The intakes... Uh, they don't fit as well as I would like, so I'm going to see want to see what they look like uh, with the base coat on, um, and then may, maybe do some more work uh, on that. Doesn't look too horrendous, but I just need to see how that how that goes. Overall, you know, it's looking like it's what it's supposed to look like. A good chunky, um, chunky gets sleek. Uh, MiG-25, so reasonably happy with the construction of this. I don't know if the fit issues were of my own making, it just seemed a little bit... I like how it went, I like the full length trunking, and how they tackled the, the boxy fuselage, but... And uh, I think they captured some of the more complex profile elements quite well as as well. Um, so I'm going to have to look at reference picks, and these intakes are certainly going to be a point of contention for me. Actually, even before looking at this now, I may have to do a bit more work. So, let's see how this goes. Soon be hitting it with a painting, I think. So, that's the update. Right, a bit on progress. I've base coated this white. With the white base, I could see where I needed to rework the filling and sanding. So I have reworked certain areas that were, shall we say, troublesome. Um, tidied up a few other bits and pieces, so we're generally there. I'm not entirely happy with the intake shape, but okay. A um, little bit of rescribing here and there. So now I'm going to apply a uh, darker grey than is going to be the main grey. Um, I'm not going to be too uniform about this because I'm going to use the white as a base in a lot of areas. Um, this is just to basically make sure I'm not doing my main coat over flat plastic. Um, and in areas that I think are going to be a bit darker, I'll also go for the darker coat. So it's not an out and out pre-shade. It is more of a second base coat, especially over areas where I've also um, sanded and reworked. So you can see it's had some attention and now it's going to get this. It may actually turn out being bit more extensive by areas like the wing the leading edge which haven't been touched I'm probably going to leave them white because I want that to be like a, a lighter base um, later on when I get to masking off the main metallic areas around here um, that is going to be pre-painted black and then I'll apply the metallic finish so this is my next coat, which is officially light grey, uh, but it's a slightly darker light grey than the other greys. If that makes any sense. Very, very, very much the uh, Fifty Shades of Grey build, this one. Okay, so this is where we're at. Another update on progress. I've got the main grey on. Bit of thermal variation there, but I'm going to be uh, lost once I put down the ceiling uh, varnishes. 
Um, I've taken the areas that I want to keep in the metallic and I've hit them with black as you can see there. So that's been applied there. And uh, we'll now start hitting the uh, the main shades of uh, grey. Now I sealed that lot up with the coat of grey first, but I mean, sorry, the main shades of the metallic. So that'll be going over on this area. Here we are with MiG-29 RBF. Um, main painting is mostly done. Um, so a few coats of grey layered up. Uh, I'm now in the process of the final bits of cleaning off the uh, Pro Modeler wash that was applied and then we're going through the white back process um, but that was put on after I gave this a good coat with my uh, Johnson's Clear um, the metallic paint came on a little bit textured as sometimes I find they can do particularly as I use the Tamiya uh, metallic which does mean cleaning off can sometimes present more of an issue but I'm reasonably happy with the finish I think it'll need a few the metallic areas will need a couple of coats of uh, varnish um, so once I've worked on this that a bit more with the um, with the gets all my panel lines I lost quite a bit of detail there's quite a fair bit of sanding around this area and I'm going to probably reinstate the panel lines, stroke rivet lines, uh, a bit more on the air intakes. You can see here how they uh, fade out uh, a little bit and the wash hasn't taken that well there. So it's going to be doing some post painting, uh, scribing. Also clean up a little bit. I'm quite ha I like the way this takes its, uh, the washes. On the metallics, um, I'm going to be using more oils. I think the main next major painting step is going to be to paint in the uh, panels for the uh, um, camera systems. I believe in this case it was a uh, rather than um, camera images, it was effectively using. Um, radar uh, mapping technology so we like ground radar mapping technology that's my understanding so the these panels here have to be in a darker color as behind them were the emitters i either that or there was like a shuttered window behind but they haven't provided lenses with this kit so i don't think that this was optical reconnaissance i, I might have to look that up and correct myself on that i just get that impression with this um, so these windows or panels have to be uh, repainted. Spot a bother with dielectrics. I had uh, a little bit of paint bleed through, which meant I had to rework some areas. That always bugs me a little bit. And you can see there, sorry, on that face, there's still the uh, Flory Pro Model wash. So it's always one of the things about this stuff that the best stuff for wiping it off. For moistening the um, kitchen towel to, what, to clean it up, it's actually human saliva. Which, yeah, I know it sounds a little bit gross, but it just seems to have the right chemical composition to really work well with the um, wipe off of the uh, Pro Modeler wash. I would probably suggest um <laughs> if you're doing a big cleanup after using this stuff do so after eating a packet of say ready salted crisps or something like that uh because you'll be um generating saliva to offset the uh the saltiness in your mouth um it just seems don't ask me why it just seems to work better than just plain water <laughs> Yeah, then after all this done, of course, there's going to be another coat of varnish of various types of varnish to seal it all up. Um, 
but this will get me I'll once I've done more of the painting um, seal it up with another coat of Johnson's clear and then um, apply the decals and then do another seal up and then I'll decide whether what uh, type of final coat do I go for a gloss a semi gloss or a matte finish or a mixture depending on the area so that's now it's this case of layering overall I'm relatively happy with this um, it's going in the right direction so progress now on the uh, MiG-25 main painting and weathering is is done um, after putting on the uh, Flory Pro Modeler black wash I uh, wiped it down I then took some grey um, medium sea grey which I lightened with white and just took the tones up in almost like up lighting it a bit um, so taking back the darkness of the tone compensating for some of the water the wash and easing it back to a light overall finish kept the underside a little bit darker um, on the metallics we had the gold on the jet pipe and that was over blended with a mixture of um, Tamiya smoke and the um, a little bit of silver and quite a lot of uh, thinner in there and I use that as a sort of a blending uh, shade um, to work through this area. Um, so you still got the basic uh, gold base giving you that sort of bronzy effect. And then that sort of blended through with um, creating uh, like a, uh, a filter. A filter shade to go over it um, retouching a couple of places with the floor uh, pro modeler wash just to bring out things like these uh, vents so I don't want to lose detail like that either um, a little bit of um, issues with the recce system apertures I had some bleed through when I masked and painted these I was using the uh, Ravel paint and I thought it was thick enough but I did get one or two issues a little bit tidying up necessary but nothing too bad there so overall I'm quite happy with that it's good I've sealed everything up now with a coating of Tamiya semi-gloss varnish which then provides which is going to be the base for my decal so I hopefully don't get uh, any silvering start off with the main set uh, first so put these on and then I have got the fun <laughs> with these so that's just going to be something you work through over a good few days bit by bit by bit um, I don't like how some of these red text um, they just look too blocky and they're going to look like warping great red blocks they've merged them too much <coughs> one small detail that I do like they've included the um, aircraft name designation as a decal which if you're doing a display piece a display base a flight stand anything like that having something like that is a really nice touch to put on there so I like it when companies do those um, this is going to be just, I think, almost layer by layer on here rather than trying to cut out around all these as tops work your way down uh, as if you're reading to put these on. And this may just be the easiest sequence to do with, do them in. And then tick them off on the uh, decal diagram as to where they go. So... That's going to be a bit of fun, but I think it's quite doable. Once they're on, I'm going to have to get the Tamiya weathering powders and fade them in because you're going to have like fresh markings on what is a fundamentally a faded fuselage. 
if I overspray it, you're going to obliterate a lot too much of it. So this is very much a case of using the Tamiya weathering powders and then sealing all that down. Um, using the grey tones just to fade them into the uh, background on which they're sitting on. Um, because when you look at Russian aircraft, you do see the red stars often in a pretty faded, shoddy state. So this is where we're at. I'm quite happy now with how it's progressing. Um, I think all the key elements have come together on this. So, you know, it's looking like what it's supposed to be in the right level of tone. I'm not going to do intake covers for this. Main reason is that they're lost, tucked away deep in the intakes. When the... Uh, canopy masking comes off I've got to remask it and put that red strip that goes around it that needs to be painted in with a very fine uh, brush so that'll be like a, a remask on the canopy and then put in that detail strip so that's where we're at so here we are with the completed uh, MiG-25 RBF the uh, recce Fox bat. So painted with the Tamiya paints, uh, Flory Pro Modeler wash, and uh, Tamiya weathering powders, then sealed up with the uh, Tamiya uh, matte finish, um, matte uh, varnish. And I've got to be honest with you, I'm reasonably happy with this. Um, it's come out reasonably well. It looks like what it's supposed to be. Um, no, what I would classify as particularly significant issues. Um, toned back the weathering a bit, used different techniques. Um, went for the lighter tones, used the weathering powders just to bring out just a hint of the uh, uh, chromate underlying paint um, I managed to blend in the decals spent a bit of time with the stencil decals didn't put all of them on just put a reasonable amount on and I put the uh, yellow trim around the canopy by hand so uh, I like the big uh, fuel tank on the underside I took a series of photos, I then somehow realised I managed to forget to put that on. Um, so a lot of the uh, build pics I have, oh, I mean not build pics, uh, final pics I have, are without the big fuel tank though. In a lot of them it's quite hard to see anyway despite its size. It's a nice kit, um, if I do have an issue with it, it's uh, the shape of these intakes that they actually I canted in a little bit like that, um, as can be seen there in that view. So the shape is a little bit out, but that said, it's uh, bearable. Lost quite a lot of detail on the standing there, so it had to be rescribed. Decals would have been nice for the uh, recon panels. And I think that's something that could have come with the kit, but okay. Um, overall, yeah, it's, if you can get around the fit here, this is probably the IC, the latest versions of the ICM MiG-25 kit are probably the best one out there in, in 172nd scale. Uh, general all-round detail, it's very good, and um, it builds up quite nicely as well. Just some of the, yeah, this area, and... This joint here, uh, I would say, are definitely model weaknesses. Uh, in nice exhaust, nice other areas, reasonable level of detail, um, but still a few points. Overall, thoroughly enjoyed this build. I like its outcome. And now it does mean I have, in my mind, the complete... 
MiG-25. Collection. So we have the operational trainer version, the MiG 25U, the MiG 25 RBF, and the MiG 25 Interceptor. Now I know some versions of the uh, Recce Bird also carried bombs for high altitude, high speed bombing. I'm not going to worry too much about that. So there is like another um, sort of version in between like these two. But honestly, the Interceptor, the Recce and the uh, Operational Conversion aircraft, you know, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. Uh, and it's for me a, a relatively complete body of work, which is always something I, I like. Big, grey, Russian, and fast. Um, so, thoroughly enjoyable build, and the photos to uh, follow on this. The techniques I'm happy with. It's a single tone aircraft. Um, and you can see different sort of levels of shading, different degrees of panel lining uh, on this. And I suppose this one does sit in between these two. Um, it is very much a Shades of Grey game. Um, so I think really the MiG-25 is a subject matter for me in 172nd is done now. Um, we should be happy. Uh, so uh, thank you guys for your thoughts.